My name is Abby. Me? I'm from Australia. You? You're somewhere else in this world. But you're about to watch Farm for Louis. <laughs> So we've just got off the flight from San Diego and I bumped into Carmen and this is a really crazy story. So like five years ago when I was doing parties on my boom bus, I did her party and then she was like, are you who I think you are? And then she was like, you're off YouTube, but also you did my party. So that's really crazy. So, and we didn't really realize until we got off the plane. It was great. How, oh, how was your long. flight? Oh, it was long. Yeah? Yeah, tedious. Yeah. But it's my birthday next week. Were in my back all the way. Yeah, sorry about that. I've got really long legs. <laughs> I, just, I can't fit them behind the seat. But we're back in England now and we, we've been greeted by the lovely rain. 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 <laughs> That was simple. Walked up to the luggage belt and the first bag I saw coming round was mine. So I'm ready to find Steve now. My phone died, so I'm hoping Steve's here. It's Steve! Hey Come to pick me up. Oi, how's life, man? How's good, life in the good. UK? Busy, just trying to get all the orders out, but it's been good, man. Happy yeah. to have you back. Yeah. Got a cheeky little coffee. I have to fight the jet lag so hard. Steve's still keeping up his no sugar eating. How impressive is that? I was just like, do you want a little chocolate brownie? Who's like, nah, I'm not doing the sugar thing. And I was like, oh, Steve, yes. Babe, babe, babe. Ooh, who's that, babe? Look how excited. <laughs> Whoa, babe. Good girl. Uh, who's that, babe? Who's that? Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna chill. I just need to fight the jet lag. I need to fight the jet lag. Um, we're just gonna have a little uh, catch up. It's been long, and we're well. What are these, man? Are these the boxes? Packaging, man. Yes. Packaging. Right, we're gonna have a little strategy meeting for find the nomads. Me and Steve have just been chilling because I'm like zoning out today because I didn't sleep on the plane and I'm horribly jet lagged. But I'm battling through and I think I'm winning, I think I'm winning. But well, we're going out for dinner now. Lex is in the back and we're gonna go meet with Jake as well and have a very fun evening. Steve, where are we, man? Steve, we're gonna get some sweet food. <laughs> it's a cool restaurant, it's a cool restaurant. I've got a um, corn on the cob. I'm not really sure how hungry I am. So I'm just going to start off chilled and then see what happens. I like this guy. It's all about getting the butter. Lex has got a whole r rack of ribs. Yeah. Oh, did you have a good meal, Steve? Sweet. I love it here, man. Yeah. Awesome food. I'm kind of too tired to um, appreciate it right now, but it's good. It's really good. I'm back at Steve's, so we've got a bit of laptop club going on. I'm gonna crash here tonight. My parents are still in France with Darcy. They're on their way back. I'm gonna get back tomorrow. Um, but I'm really tired. It's been another tiring day. I'm gonna head to sleep now and try and catch up with some well-needed rest. Um, as I haven't really done much today, I thought I'd answer a, another few questions that you guys had for me. What is your most crazy near-death experience? I can't remember whether I've shared this with you guys or not, but Dave Erasmus, you know Dave, my mate Dave, he actually saved my life once. I was swimming off the south coast of England and it was really cold water and I, um, whilst I was swimming I cramped up and I started hyperventilating as well. I'd just eaten and I'm not a great swimmer anyway. 
and I started getting really dizzy in the water and I was like, Dave, Dave, mate, like, help. And we, we managed to swim to a buoy and then I was holding onto the buoy and I was like dizzy and I couldn't really see and I was just like, oh mate, I can't swim back and it was getting bad and I was kind of like basically passing out and Dave grabbed me, swam me ashore, I crawled onto the beach, like vomited, like I, it was full on, like I think I had like early stages of hypothermia as well, it was mental. So that was a pretty close to death experience and, and Dave saved my life. If I had a lot of money, what charity or charities would I give to? There's not one specific charity that jumps out at me, but I remember going to this thing one time where this guy was talking about kind of the worthy causes in the world and things that need to change in order for the world to get, you know, be a better place and what we should look to change. And something that was like a root cause of a lot of other problems was like inequality and mistreatment of women. And there was this whole kind of reasoning behind how a lot of other things are caused by that. So that really struck me as like, oh yeah, like if we could address some of those issues in developing countries, that could have a knock on effect to a lot of other issues that are going on. So that kind of, I think that's a cause that I'd get behind. One other question before I head off, um, not quite as deep, what's my favorite animal? I've got to say my favourite animal is a lion because it's still kind of the king of the jungle, beast, strong and it's um, symbolic but also, you know, he's just chilled, he's just chilling out in the savannah in Africa. He's just like, oh I'm just going to sleep all day in the sun. So I like that kind of mixture. Right, I'm, I'm going to get some sleep tomorrow I think, we're, I'm going to need to rush off to get to like an embassy to get a visa for somewhere and I meet with me and Steve are meeting up with Ben and then we might even meet up with Jack and Finn and Troy later on, who knows. Peace out, enjoy life and live the adventure. Boom.